Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to talk about installing Lion Server uh, onto your Mac. Now, Apple came out with Lion Server, and in the past, uh, server software was quite expensive. It was pretty technical. It was, uh, it was a little bit more difficult. But now Apple has decided to uh, extend its server software so that people can use them for home servers. And so basically their software package has unlimited clients. It's $49.99 to download and it attaches to your existing uh, Lion install. And so it really is a good deal and I know a lot of people have asked the question as to whether they should use it or not uh, for a home network and so I thought we'd explore that together. Uh, but as we get started, the first thing uh, first thing you need to do is a little bit of preparation before you start a server because it's a little different than uh, client software. Uh, the first thing you need to figure out is what kind of hardware am I going to use with this server? Now, one of the things about a server is the fact that it's on all the time so that you can access it uh, for files, for backups, for those kinds of things. And so you really want a computer that's going to be on all the time or on you know more time than not. Uh, and it's usually not a portable computer because you want that computer to be in one location. So laptops usually aren't a good good idea. Now I've run server software on a, a Mac Pro, uh, as you can see here. I've done that before. Uh, and uh, it worked pretty well. The, the only problem was it was more power than I really needed and uh, and it took up a lot of uh, power consumption itself and, and my energy bill showed that. So instead what I've done is I've decided to run a server on a Mac Mini. And so I bought this Mac Mini uh, quad-core server and uh, so far it's been really uh, really a good uh, piece of hardware. It runs uh, very cool, it runs quiet, and it, it doesn't has a very small energy footprint so I actually have seen a benefit in my energy bills. But whatever it is that you try uh, that you'd like to run as a server you want to pick something again that's going to be something you can use in one place. Uh, the other thing that you want to decide is what you want to use your server for. Uh, some of the advantages of using a server is you can have time machine backups in a centralized location so that all of your computers can back up to one uh, hard drive without having to use a time capsule. Uh, it also allows you to file share so that you can get, uh, get a hold of any of your files uh, on your server uh, throughout your home. Uh, you can also do all kinds of other things like home accounts where people can log into any computer in your home and, and have their actual home screen show up just like at a work if you're at a work environment where that happens in your work network. So there's a lot of great advantages uh, and things that you can do but you need to figure out what type of server you want. And as we take a look at some of these settings, you'll, you'll get an idea for that. Uh, because if you just want a local uh, server, you don't want to access it from the internet, then that's fine. You can uh, just set up the server. You don't have to worry about anything. It would be a, a, a .local uh, ID. But if you wanted to set up a server uh, where you can access it uh, from the internet, uh, you'd need a registered domain name. To help you uh, get started with a domain name, I thought what I would do is show you uh, a little bit of how that looks. So uh, my hosting provider is Mac Highway. Uh, I, I use them because I have a pretty modest uh, website uh, and, uh, and their prices are really good. And they work with the Mac software that I work with in terms of the technicians and they've gotten good reviews on the internet. And so you'd come to a hosting site like this and what you would do is if you had a domain name you would want to use, you could check it on here. So for instance, if I put mine in, which I know uh, is going to be taken, you can, you can see here you could do a .com, .net, there's all kinds of options. So if you don't find it on .com but you really like the name, you can find a different uh, you know, dot on the end like .net, .biz or something like that. And then you click go here and then it goes and it looks over the internet to see if, uh, if that domain is already taken or if, uh, if it's available. And then based on that, if it's available, then you'll be able to uh, you know, buy it or use it. And so here we are in the domain checker and you can see here there's my domain name. It says it's unavailable, which obviously is because I, I already have it. But if it said it was available for you, then you could go through this order now process and, uh, and you could go through the various options then uh, to, to purchase a domain name. Now once you uh, have a domain name, what will happen is they'll send you an email with information on how to uh, log into their system to handle the DNS. Now with, uh, with Mac Highway, they've got uh, a cPanel, and cPanel is kind of a, uh, 
uh, a common panel that's used on websites to help you, uh, you know, redirect uh, the different do domain name services and things like that. Also to help you manage your website if you have your website hosted off-site. And like we said, with the server, you can host it either on your uh, home server yourself, uh, which again, I don't recommend uh, unless you want to spend money for a static IP address, or what you do is you, uh, or you can have them host the uh, host your uh, actual website for you but regardless of that what you've got to do is have a way for people on the internet to be able to use uh, you know your domain name to actually get to your home server because that's what you want to do without having to punch numbers in all the time and stuff like that so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, log into my uh, cPanel here and this is what the cPanel looks like and what you want to do is no matter what your domain registrar is you want to come down and find your uh, uh, DNS zone editor uh, like different ones will have different names uh, where it might be just DNS name servers you know that kind of stuff but you want to click here on the zone and in this area here you can go and you can set a name and an IP address that that name will point to. So that instead of having to put in numbers like, you know, 72859 dot dot dot, you know, that kind of stuff, you can just put in, you know, your name like server, you know, jones.com or whatever it is, and that would get you in. So what I would do here is type in uh, what I want the, uh, the name to be uh, for me to be able to access uh, my server, and then I would put the IP address in. Now, if you're wondering what is the IP address, um, I'll show you how to find that in a second. But let me just, as I'm looking at this, let me tell you the difference between these two. You have an A record and you have a C name. Now an A record is a primary record. That's the one where if I say uh, I want you know, uh, server.joe.com to point to this IP address which is at my home computer. And so that way when you're on the internet you can put you know server.jones.com and that will get you into uh, your website or your web address for whatever you're hosting at home. And I'll show you, you can host a wiki and all those kinds of things at home. So this is where you would do that. This is your primary record. Uh, a C name is if you wanted to point other subnames to that same IP address. Uh, for instance, if you had uh, something like you wanted it to say uh, anything that says jones.com, I want to point to this IP address. You would put that in there. It's almost like an alias of sorts. And then that name too would also point to the same IP address. So that's why it gives you an, an opportunity to do that in different ways. For our home server purposes, we just want to put in one A record so that we can just access uh, our wiki and things like that that we'll set up uh, from the internet. And so you'll put that information in here. Now, uh, a little uh, bit more of information on how you find uh, the IP address that you want to put in there. Uh, you can uh, actually go to another web service. Let me just uh, open another tab here. And uh, you can just uh, put in uh, what is my IP. Okay, And when you do a search, it will actually give you your IP right up here. And so you would take that IP address then and drop it back in here on the cPanel and then put the name that you want to point it to. And that's pretty much it. Then you save it and that information would show up down here. And you can delete it anytime you want, but at least once you have that set up, then that allows you to access it from the internet. Now here's what I found. I found that uh, my local IP uh, that I get from from my uh, my IP service uh, doesn't doesn't change very often, so I really haven't had too much of a problem where I've got to change it. Now, if that number where you say what is my IP changes at all, because most of us don't have static IPs, we've got dynamic ones, and so they can change when we do reboots and different things like that. Uh, you might want to check that from time to time so that you can come back in here and make the change so that it still points there. So if for some reason you use your your name server jones.com and you can't get it into your wiki, just do that little trick there on what is my IP, figure out to see if the number changed. If it did, go back into the cPanel of the company that's hosting your domain and make the change and you should be all set. So that's the basics of how you set that up. And again, for a home server, that's pretty much all we need to know right now. Uh, there are other things that you can do with this, but that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're going to do with this tutorial. Okay, now that we've got our uh, DNS settings set up and ready to go, because we want to have a server that's going to be able to be accessed from the internet. Uh, now we just go to uh, the App Store and pull up Lion Server. And so you go and uh, find Lion Server and purchase it. I've already got it installed, but what you do is just buy it. It's $49.99. You would buy it. 
uh, click purchase and then Lion Server would basically then uh, comes down and installs uh, on your Mac and so uh, as we'll see here once we're done with the installation once it's installed it'll come back up and help us get started in installing it okay so once you've downloaded uh, server it comes up with uh, with this when the application is launched where it asks you to continue and so what you're going to do here is you're, it's going to install things to make your particular uh, Lion install, the client version, into a server version. Now as we'll see later, you can use the same software to access a server remotely, but what we're going to do is just install the server software right now so you get a feel for it. So we want to agree to the software terms here, and uh, we want to just click continue to install, to download and install the software. So it's going to ask for authentication and then it's going to start the process. It's telling me I'm not connected to battery, but that's okay. I'm going to continue anyway. And it's going to now go to the internet and download everything it needs and configure it so that you have a server install that works for you. And so when this is done, we're going to we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so now server has finished uh, configuring the services and it says everything's configured successfully, so we're going to click finish. And what it's going to do is pull up the Lion Server uh, panel here, and this is what the uh, this is what the entire interface looks like. And so it's kind of a neat uh, a neat little setup. It's it's much more streamlined and polished. Uh, for those of you that might have looked at Snow Leopard Server, uh, this is a much more uh, streamlined interface. It really is designed more for the home user uh, to make it a little easier uh, to uh, find your way around. Now, what's great about this is if you look at this little pane down on the bottom that says next steps, uh, I want to show it to you because I can close it or I can open it. And what this does is this walks you through the process of configuring your server. And so you'll notice here where it says configure network. If you look to the right here, it tells you a little bit about your network. Uh, it tells you what your server's uh, host is and uh, it's automatically gonna, going to uh, identify it as a .local um, host name. Uh, it gives you what the IP address is currently, uh, and again, it says you can change these settings in the server pane, uh, which we're going to look at in a second so we can start that configuration process. Uh, and, it, and notice it says down here that your server's hostname can only be used on your local network the way it is currently, and that if you want to get outside your network, you've got to give your server a host name ending in .private uh, in the server pane and then turn on VPN service. And so let's just take a look at that right now, and what we'll do is walk through these steps in a series of videos that we'll do. So we're going to go right now to the server pane. I can click this little link here. It'll take me right over to it. Uh, you'll also notice that it's in uh, this pane on the side over here as well, just in case you're wondering where that is. And so here are here is my computer name, and here's my host name. And like I said, it defaults to .local. Now, if you buy a server uh, out of the box and you set it up for the first time, it actually has a wizard that walks you through all of these steps along the way. Because we already had a Lion install, we installed it this way, so now we have to do some of these things manually in order to make these things work the way that we want them to. So let's go through the process of what it looks like to change a host name so that you can understand what that looks like and understand the different nuances between what you want to do there. So I'm going to click Edit and it's going to evaluate my network for me here. Now when it's finished evaluating my network, you come up with this host name page. And this is an important page because it gives you an idea of three types of networks that you can set up. And this is something that you've got to decide ahead of time. You'll notice that the first one is a local network. And uh, that means that only people who are inside your network, which is usually in the range of, let's say, your home, because we're talking about setting up a home server, only they can use it. But you can't really access your server from the Internet at all. So if you're remote uh, away from your house, you can't log into your server and check things out. You can only do it while you're in your local network. And that's what we have set up right now by default. Uh, the second one there is that you can uh, set up a host name for a private network. And this allows uh, people not only to access it locally, but using a VPN. VPN connection uh, where you can uh, log in remotely then and access your uh, server from the internet. And so that gives you another way in to be able to do that. And they give you an example there where uh, you just need to have an unregistered host name uh, that uh, nobody else would have out there on the internet. Uh, and they give the example server.mycompany.private. 
And the next thing that uh, that you can set up here is having a host name for the internet. And this is where you would put in your uh, fully qualified domain name that you registered at an outside registrar. And so as I've shown you, that's what I've got. And so let me just uh, click that and let's continue. And it takes us to this connecting your Mac screen. And so on this screen is where you put your computer name. You can put in whatever you want, uh, Joe's server, however you want to name it. And then you put in your host name uh, in this field right here. And this is your fully qualified domain name. And so as they told you in the example, it's server dot your company, your name, or whatever it is, dot com. And you would put that in there, and that would allow you then to uh, access the Internet. Now you can see here that... Uh, that we can click continue or we can change the network settings and let me just uh, let me just click continue here for a second and uh, you'll notice now that on the next page it's actually changed the host name uh, and made the change that I just made now in going through that and if you look down below it uh, it actually says that my network is configured properly and I can change the network uh, settings in uh, in the server pane and so it's also got my host name down here. You notice that that's changed and it has an IP address, which is just my local address because I'm not doing anything accessing the internet or anything right now. Uh, and then it tells me to allow direct internet access services uh, to run on my server. I need to configure port mapping on my router. And we'll do that in, a, in another screencast. I'll show you how to do that and make that happen. So that's the basics on how to just configure your network as you're getting started to install it and to configure your domain name. And what we'll do in another screencast is I'll show you how to, how to begin to configure more of these services. So that's all I have for today, and so thank you for listening. And I'll be back at you with another screencast to help you do more things with your Mac.